What's up, everyone, and welcome to the 34th episode of the Control Freak Podcast. I am your host, Alex Blackard, or at Les Alex on Twitch and Twitter. Make sure to go head on over there and give me a follow. Today's episode, we have on my fellow Solitary Pro teammate, Logan Woodrum. Logan, how you doing tonight? I'm doing wonderful, my man. How are you? I am just peachy. Um, as always, the podcast is sponsored by Solitary Pro and the fine folks who are my patrons over at patreon.com slash Les Alex. And now, the, with the highest tier on Patreon, you can get one free donation deck on my Twitch channel. So that is another added perk to the, the long list of perks of becoming a patron over there. And shout out to my newest patrons, Ryan C. and Kyle H. And I appreciate the support from everyone over there at Patreon.com. And, of course, if you dig the content, make sure to head on over to Apple Podcasts. Give me a five-star review. It really does go an extremely long way with help being the algorithm. Figure out that people actually dig the content. Again, as you know, I don't like the one stars and the two stars. If you don't like the podcast, just DM me on Twitter and tell me how much you hate it. <laughs> Today's episode, we are going to be discussing the bannings in modern, or should I say, the unbanning of Celestial Colonnade, <laughs> as well as the fallout of the bannings and the winners and losers from the bannings, as well as some of the cards that are going to have an impact in both Modern and Pioneer from Theros. So, Logan, are you ready? I sure am. Let's get it. All righty. So obviously the first thing, the huge thing, the biggest thing we've got to talk about are these bannings. Holy smokes, we got hit with a... I mean, I don't think anyone was ready for this, right? Like, there's no chance that all three of these cards... So for those that don't know, <laughs> um, the bannings were Mox Opal, which blew my mind. I, I never thought in a million years that, that it would get banned. Um, Michael Synth Lattice, which I think is kind of an interesting one. And then, of course, Oko, Thief of Crowns. Broco, Oko, finally gone. It's about time. Um, what Overall, if, if you off the rip, what was your initial thought? Um, my initial thought was I was ready for um, at least one of the two... Uh, to go, I thought it was either going to be Opal or Oko, but I did not see Micah Synth Lattice at all. That's yeah, what got me the the most. I mean, it was. Um, it's honestly like a, a just a giant bomb on. It. Like I feel like we finally have because initially this podcast was devoted to modern, and then Oko got printed and like all hell broke loose. And I just literally, honestly, haven't really played the format since Oko. It yeah. just, I feel like, and I feel that a lot of people feel this way, we got our format back. <laughs> we did. So, and not just control players. I feel like a lot of folks really stepped away from modern because of the Oko Menace. Yep. Modern got modern back, honestly. Yeah, exactly. The Magic players. The Magic players got modern back. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just, so Oko obviously makes sense, right? That that yeah. is just off the rip. I'm like, okay, this is great. Mox Opal, it, it seemed to me every time there was an issue with Modern the past three or four years, you could kind of point at Mox Opal and be like, okay, well, all these, like KCI is paying the sin, paying for the sins of Mox Opal. Like, <laughs> so this yeah. makes sense to me. I just thought because they want affinity and i know affinity hasn't been tier one per se in in quite some time but i just never thought they pulled the trigger to be honest logan <laughs> i didn't think so either honestly did not but they did and uh they did so they, now they they definitely did and so now we are we are left and lattice is is an interesting one too obviously i think it kind of feels like the uh what was it rampaging ferocidon from that banning yeah. It feels like okay. Well, if we get rid of these Oko, uh, these Oko decks and these Urza decks, right? 
this is the next deck that's going to be the the best the quote unquote best deck. Yeah. Um, um we were already seeing decks that would just play uh Karn the Great Creator yeah. just to have that in its wish board. Absolutely. Um so that ranged from Eldrazi, um Eldrazi Tron to Tron itself. There were yeah. blue white decks that were playing it, artifact based decks yeah, that were playing I, it. I saw a couple of wild lists in the uh Facebook group that that Fran runs and holy smokes, some of them were actually playing four cards for a wish board. I'm like, this can't be correct, right? Because like, yeah. we were at the point where we were getting that desperate, right? There, there was that we were trying anything because yeah, like, for the go on, like that's that's what it came to, like yeah, um, with, <laughs> with Oko in the format and everything else, like you're doing whatever you can you can do to get these percentage points, and if yeah. that's what Karn granted you, you you do it. Yeah, um, and obviously the Bant deck, the Bant Snow Control, um, was a deck that people were playing and that a lot of fellow uh, blue-white mages like Mick Windsauce and uh, Doom Switch kind of switched to. Uh, but that wasn't me. I'm I'm a blue-white purist. <laughs> yeah, so, that's what I played at um, SCG Knoxville right before the ban. So I got to, I got to play blue-white in that format, and it was... It was rough. I 100%, bet. 100% it was yeah. rough. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel great about these bannings. Obviously, it sucks for the folks that have had Mox, you know, having $400 just ripped out of their collection, basically. So I, I do feel for them. And I did go through a period in Standard. Do you remember whenever uh, the Cat Combo got banned and then Marvel got banned and then... Uh, the energy deck got banned. I played all yep. three of those decks, so I get it. Um, but I am, a, and I actually tweeted this out a couple of weeks ago, or when when the not a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago, um, when the bannings happen. Yes, bannings do suck, but no one person's collection or financial investment is worth more than the format or the community's fun factor as a whole. Yep. And I, I I stand by that. A hundred percent. I get it. It sucks, but it, it, it's a means to an end. It, there is a point to this. There is a reason. There is a rhyme to this. So, um, but yeah. So winners and losers. Uh, let's talk winners first. Um, let's talk winners, losers. Uh, winners and losers from this. Winners first. Who do you think has the biggest biggest win? And I, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but we should still point it out. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be the the Titan decks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean, Primeval Titan, so either either Scape Shift um, or, obviously, Amulet is probably the front runner. Yeah, probably and, the the king of the format at, at this point. Oh, absolutely. And that's not great for blue-white, so <laughs> that's funny, no, too. No, it's not. Because... You say, oh, wow, Oko and Mox Opal and Mycosynth Lattice, Lattice are banned? Um, yeah, this is great. Blue White's going to be excellent. And then you're like, wait a second. They, 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 forgot, to ban, they forgot to ban Primeval Titan. <laughs> yep. So I definitely think, though, we, we do pick up a huge W from these bannings as, as a control player I'm speaking up from, of course, but we, we definitely, it kind of is a moot point and kind of a wash in terms of, well, now primeval Titan decks are everywhere. And guess what? We just get crushed by them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, and veil of summer is still a card that's legal in this format somehow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so with just another L there. Like yeah. We got, we got enough wins. But we just couldn't make the playoffs. Is what it feels like. like we <laughs> right? got there, but we. It's like we got to the. For, yeah. yeah, it's it's like we got to the wild card game and then just uh, crapped the bed. <laughs> yeah, oh, we managed man. to dodge. We managed to dodge everything. We made it all the way there, and then we play somebody who's just as just yeah. as good as us, and we just lose. We pay, we played the twenty seven Yankees in the playoffs and yeah. just got crushed by the murders <laughs> row. Um, so other winners though, obviously I believe burns a huge winner because I mean, burn, I, I've never played that deck against an Oko deck, but I got to assume making a food token every turn is just like insurmountable for burn yeah, like, to beat. Um, 
<laughs> um, one food turt one food token equals one burn spell. Exactly. Yeah, and you get to do that every single turn because there's no way they can kill Oko, at least in my mind. Um, yeah. So another winner is Storm, Gift Storm or Twiddle. Either way, pick your poison. That is a deck that I enjoy. Um, I play it from time to time. I actually played it on my Twitch stream a couple of nights ago. Had a blast. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Storm... You know, not having not having all these Oko decks running around, um, I think is great. And the fact also that Primeval Titans are good just inherently makes uh, Storm Gift Storm specifically good because when we're racing, I go off on turn three, very 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 consistently. You go off on turn typically four consistently. So yeah, I, I think Storm. Correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I think Storm's definitely a winner on this one. Yep, I think it's it's a winner, and you could arguably say that Devoted Devastation's also a winner. Um, oh, sure. They're a deck that just goes off on on three two, sometimes even even two if it's yeah if it's if the hand's good yeah. enough. Um, but and that's something, something that, that Mickey, just goes off before they do. Yeah, that's that's a deck that Mickey really. Uh, uh, our teammate Mickey Humphrey, shout out, <laughs> um, has really been playing. He he streams quite a bit, um, playing that deck now. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, what he he got top sixteen in Dallas, I believe. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely been a, a champion of that deck, and now it's kind of gotten a leg up on the competition. I I would say. Um, but yeah, and, and the last one, obviously, just modern as a whole. If you're if you're a Magic the Gathering player, that enjoys modern or had enjoyed modern i include myself in this category because modern was my format it was my favorite format and now i feel like just a lot uh, just a huge burden has been lifted from my shoulders by not having to deal with uh oko dot deck and maybe if that card isn't in the metagame maybe veil of summer won't be in the metagame as much either is my line of thinking yeah. It, it might have got so. pseudo unba- or pseudo banned. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the only decks that would be playing it are the Titan decks. Um, you could say Devoted Devastation decks would play it. Yeah. Um, Storm decks, if they splash the green for it. Um, but honestly, it just feels like Titan would be the only one that's playing it. I don't know if the Yawgmoth decks are playing it, but I'm not sure where that deck's going to be at now. Yeah, and it's it speaks a lot to the so to kind of side uh, sidebar here. Karn the Great Creator is still seeing play in in uh, Tron decks. So this card is very strong still. It, it wasn't just a gimmick with Mycosynth Lattice. So keep an eye out for it because being able to shut down your opponent's uh, artifacts is still very good, and having a wish board is still just very strong. The fact that you can't yep. just win on the spot is obviously not as good. <laughs> it definitely took a hit, don't get me wrong. But, yeah, it, it's still definitely... Tron is definitely a winner in this scenario as well. <laughs> Agreed. Um, but So moving on to the losers here. Losers in Modern. Um, obviously, pour one out for the homies of Affinity. Like, oh my god. If, if you already weren't kind of in the... <laughs> In the grass, in the dirt, already, man, boy, it, it, is that deck just dead now? Like, can we just bury yeah, the hatchet I, and move on? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's gone. The only thing that would bring it back would have to be the unban of all the artifact lands. Yeah, and I've seen that on Twitter too. People are proposing that. Some people that are like not crazy. I've seen <laughs> <laughs> like you know because how you know how Twitter, Magic Twitter, can be sometimes. It can get pretty yeah. crazy, but. Some people Just that the are land like of hot takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I've seen some people that I'm like, all right, I actually mess with these people, and they're they're showing out for the. I mean, that would be pretty cool though, to be honest. That would that would make some crazy stuff. I think Affinity would be right back on the map for sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. We said blue white control was a winner, but I I'm putting this one in the losers bracket as well just because yeah, you you lose a bunch of stuff, three cards that helped archetypes that were very good against blue white. They they're pretty much poof up in smoke, but now you got to deal with all these primeval titan decks and oh boy howdy, 
we're going to we're going to talk about the modern preliminary um and yeah <laughs> primeval Di titan decks were everywhere basically big mana dot tournament <laughs> so i mean yes we pick up percentage points against the rest of the field but if we're assuming that a large chunk of the field is going to be primeval titan decks it's kind of a wash um yeah. Yeah, so, and then, so, I mean, that's, those are my losers. Do you have any other losers? Um, Other than, obviously, the, the Oko deck. Yeah, anybody that played, like, Urza decks, I guess, um, they got hit really hard, and now they're having to play Mox Amber, but Mox Amber would only produce blue now, two, so, yeah. yeah. Um, so, they've lost the key mana source, Um so Urza decks have definitely taken a step back, but Urza is still a busted card anyway, so it's still going to be good. Um, outside of that, we just we don't know because there yeah. hasn't been a lot in the format from where it was just Oko decks, Primeval decks, and then whatever uh, splash flavor could ta uh, could catch somebody off guard that week. Yeah, it, it's it'll be interesting. I think another win or two. I know we already did winners, but. Um, the prow the mono red prowess deck basically. Yeah, it's a, yeah, no, go for it. It's a full turn faster than burn, so I think that might be just the go to now. If it's a full turn faster than burn, even with Oko being out. Yeah, these it are just kind of feels like that is the fastest way. These are the Soul Scar, Niv Magus, Elemental, Monastery, Swift Spear decks that uh, I'm referring to. But yeah, I mean, overall. I think this is a huge win for modern players as a whole. Um, yeah. Again, I, I do I do understand it sucks getting cards from your favorite deck or from a deck that you have invested in, banned, but you kind of got to look at the whole big picture. I'll get off my soapbox, but... <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to the next thing. Theros cards that are going to be making an impact and Pioneer and modern as well as we can talk a little bit of standard if you want um so the first card that i wanted to talk about was elspeth sun's nemesis this card is excellent this is one of the cards in last week's episode the theros beyond death preview episode that i said i really really liked i finally got to play it and it already 5-0'd a pioneer league shout out to doom switch he was or is the blue white control goat in modern, and he's he's already bringing his skills to uh, to pioneer now. So, Elspeth Sun's Nemesis was a two of in his five O list. It looks really good. I'm excited. I'm actually as soon as we get done recording this, I'm streaming tonight, and I'm going to be streaming his list. And I have my list up on my Patreon too. So, uh, but what do you think about Elspeth Sun's Nemesis? Um, I think that it's great, and what makes it uh, as good as it is is its its recursiveness. It's a planeswalker that you can continue to play, yeah. even if it's already been uh, killed the first time. Absolutely. Uh, escape is a busted mechanic. Um, a lot of people are sleeping on it. I've heard a lot of people say that it's um, they don't know how good it's going to be, or it's just yeah. not going to be good. People said that about Delve. Delve is oh busted. My God. Yeah, Del people Del said is. it about adventure. Adventure is busted. Like this is something that like people just aren't evaluating how good it is. And Elspeth is going to be one of the cards that are going to show you how good it is. Yeah, I mean, um, did you have anything else? I was just gonna. I was just gonna say the fact that even though the Planeswalker only has modes that tick it down, right? Escape makes up for that because you sure. just get to do it all over again. Absolutely. Um, at its worst, say you only get to play this card once. At its worst, it is an overcosted history of Benalia, right? Because you, you you make actually it's kind of better than that because you get more dudes off of it. Yeah. Um, but at its best, and I've said this before, I actually made a meme on Twitter about it. It is inevitable. It is the Thanos of Planeswalkers because it will if left unchecked in the if your opponent doesn't have any interaction with your graveyard and you're playing this in a blue white control shell style deck, it will win you the game. Like over yeah. the span of a long, you know, 15 turn game, 
this card will 110% win you the game. Obviously, yep. your opponent, if they go over the top and crash in with some Eldrazi or some nonsense like that, obviously that could stifle these plans. But if unchecked and all things are equal, Elspeth will win you the game. Not close. Like, And it packs a punch. You bank the two dudes, and then you bash in for six? Like, for six? We get to attack for six on turn five in blue-white control? Oh. Are you kidding me? That's yeah, so good. It doesn't happen very often. No, it's... And- you get to turn the corner so fast. One of the biggest problems, especially with like newer control players, one of the hugest things, one of the biggest concepts to try and wrap your brain around is like, when do I turn the corner? This almost eliminates that issue. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a two of, it's a two of in my list, and it was actually a two of in Doom Switch's 5 0 list as well. We have a bunch of cards that are different, so it's not like we're playing the exact 75 or anything. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's really good, and I'm super, super duper stoked to play it on stream tonight. But um, the next card we wanted to talk about was the new Ashiok. The, uh, yep. What did, did you have any thoughts or feelings about this card? I have been clapped on this card <laughs> multiple times. In in um, what format? Standard. Yeah, so this is definitely a, a standard all-star. I, I believe that this could see some play in, in Pioneer as well, but, I mean, yeah, in standard, this is a slam dunk. Yeah. Um, we've seen the flavor of um, Is It Flash or, like, the Simic Flash decks that play, yeah. like, Brownborn Cutthroat and that kind of thing. Well, Theros has just basically been blue-black flash. Um, they'll play a lot on your turn with their own brownborn cutthroats, their ops, yeah. murderous riders at instant speeds, so they have like a kill spell for either your creatures or your points walkers. Um, and then once they get to five, you know, they've already tapped you out yeah. on your turn. They just slam Ashiok and well, just go. I, I think that this card is very, and, and this might be a hot take or whatever, but I think this card is very comparable to Teferi Hero of Dominaria. I think they like the uptick make a two three a two the butt of that dude is a two three is three toughness like that's wild yeah. that's a huge huge butt to protect itself and obviously it's it's minus is no, nothing to laugh at it can hit any no. type of permanent other than land obviously but being able to have protection against a planeswalker that would potentially ultimate like we have and I'm thinking about this in Pioneer. We have a way to beat a resolved Chandra, four drop Chandra. That card is almost lights out against uh, against uh, Esper, or especially if you're playing yeah. just blue white or blue black control. Like you just yeah. cannot beat that card. Um, other other than like Heroes Downfall or something like that. But Ashiok definitely gives you some some flexibility there, and every single every single mode i didn't even read fun fact i didn't even read the ultimate of ashiok the first time i i saw it and i was like this card's great <laughs> so yeah and, and i mean the ultimate obviously just like wins the game which is what ultimates are supposed to do <laughs> so yeah. but yeah ashiok is is really good i believe definitely a slam dunk in standard that uh esper hero deck is already popping up. I think that deck is yeah. probably the deck that you should be playing if you're if you're leaning towards kind of a mid range slash con- uh, control deck. Um, I've been jamming blue white, obviously. That's uh, right. The next, if you're not gonna jam Esper and you want to play a control deck, you want to jam my list. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the next card that kind of rolls right into what we want to talk about here is Dream Trawler. Um, Dream Trawler, this card, the new Ojitai. It is not. <laughs> so, obviously, Logan is a huge fan of Ojitai. That is very well documented on this podcast and on the internet. <laughs> but it's very good. It is um, extremely good Magic the Gathering card. Yes. I don't know if it's better than Ojitai. I, honestly, I haven't played with Ojitai much. Um, I have played with this card a bit, uh, Dream Trawler a bit, but it feels really good, dude, yeah. <laughs> especially in Standard. And people are already asking me on Twitter, is this card good enough for Pioneer? 
it might be honestly after yeah, playing it with might... it on standard in standard as much as i have it might be good enough yeah i think it's good enough for pioneer in the one to two slots especially if you're playing like a much more like tap out kind of control deck where yeah. like it's just haymaker after haymaker and then that's one that just sticks and just goes to so like Teferi on three, something on four, big Teferi on five, and then Dream Trawler on six. It's yeah. just kind of like, what do you do then? My biggest issue with Dream Trawler, and this is an issue I've had with with Torrential Gear Hulk, with Fey of Wishes, with all of these other creatures, with Brazen Borrower, all of the creatures that kind of fit the same slot in Pioneer Blue White X decks is that it's not a Planeswalker, and typically Planeswalkers are just better. But the fact that it can make itself X-proof is pretty much negates that fact. Because do you really... Does, if, if you're playing against a blue-white control or blue or Esper or whatever, um, do you really want to keep in your spot removal for something that's just going to, oh, discard a card, it's X-proof? Like... No. <laughs> Because that's my biggest thing is like typically in control you want to have somewhat of a transformational sideboard where you bring in your Lyras or your other big angel type spells and kind of just bash face against the mid-range decks and against the control decks. So because they obviously taking out their wraths and things of that nature but I don't know man this might make it in Pioneer and it's definitely yeah. <laughs> By all means, this card is going and already seeing play in standard uh, blue white. Yes. But yes, there's uh, two in my list, and uh, I'll just go ahead and say it: uh, the card is very, very, very good. Um, it's going to see play in standard. It's going to see play in pioneer. Yeah, it will not see play in modern. If you're playing yeah. it in your blue white deck in modern, then maybe. You're o- like you're going zero and nine in the first rounds of the tournament. <laughs> well, I think there's a potential for like a mid range style deck, maybe, but not control. I, I definitely would like just play your Jason Mind Sculptor and be happy. <laughs> like, yeah, you want to do something else with that six man. A lot of times yeah. you're just not going to tap out and just have a Dream Trawler just because. Like, sure, we have Force in the format, but like Force is non creature spells. Yeah, it's not. It's not going to catch everything. Exactly. Exactly. Um, the next one we wanted to talk about was Underworld Breach. This is a card that is much in the same lineage as things like Past in Flames. Um, shoot, I'm blanking on the name of the card. The black card that's like insane. It's basically Underworld Breach, but just better. Gives all your things. Anyway, um, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but... Yeah, this card is excellent. I think it was Todd Anderson who played a Legacy Challenge or a Legacy Preliminary on Moto and was playing a blue-red Underworld Breach deck. I'm not sure how he did, but the deck did look very good. This And me and Adam talked about this card last week. This card is going to break something. It's just a matter of time and where, right? Yeah. When and where. Um. I don't have too, too much to say about it. This card is definitely a card that I'm looking at because I love playing degenerate combo decks when I'm not uh, dirtling around with control. <laughs> um, yeah. And then the the very last, I don't know if you have anything else to say about Underworld Breach. Uh, I would say just wait, um, mainly because like we're still seeing stuff that's coming out of Modern Horizons that has seen absolutely no play. Yeah. And it's just now coming to the forefront and with all these oppressive decks that were in modern just gone. That card has yeah. the potential to do something because I would rather pay two for Past in Flames than four or five for it if I'm playing Storm. It's just more mana efficient that way. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if Gifts wants this just because you do need quite a few cards in your graveyard in order for, to get Underworld Breach working. But there's definitely a shell for it. There's And somebody smarter than me and better at... Uh, Storm is definitely going to be able to figure this out much quicker than I will. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but, no, there's a really sweet... I played in the uh, early access streamer event for Theros, and there was... Ali, I actually played against Ali Antrazi, and he was playing... And this is obviously standard on, on Arena, but he played a Teamer Thousand Year Storm deck with Underworld Breach and just spanked me. 
I was like playing blue eye control and I was just like, okay, you're casting seven spells a turn. I cannot do anything against this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, underworld breach is definitely sick. It's a matter of when and it's a matter of where, but it will break something someday. <laughs> um, the last card we're going to talk about, and we're not really going to talk about it, we're just going to touch on it because it is very obviously just the most pushed card, especially for standard, is, uh, what is it, Euro? The, yeah, it's Euro. The it's white. Blue green Elder John. Yeah, the, the giant titan uh, of, of ramp, basically. <laughs> um, this card is obviously just already has a home. Being able to turn four out a Nissa is just nutso. Still just just as good as it was last season. Still just as good. Um, yeah, I mean, this card's great. I don't really think we need to talk too much about it. I've seen people trying to play it in Titan decks as well in Modern, so get ready for that, I guess. But, yeah, Euro, the big green ramping Titan of excellence i don't know the card's great <laughs> yeah it's it's just kind of like this is obviously probably the best card for standard in this set and it's just not really anything to write home about like i would i would spend an entire episode telling you why i want to play elspeth and have 40 seconds to talk about euro and be fine with it <laughs> um so yeah let's talk about the modern preliminary um, this one just happened on the 18th. We're recording this episode on the 19th, so this is pretty up-to-date. This is post-ban, post-Theros Beyond Death being uh, available. So the decks that 5 owed. so this is a five-round turn. These are five-round tournaments, just so y'all know. They're very similar to leagues, but instead of, like, it being league style, it's just everybody kind of just plays a five-round tournament, and then that is what it is. Um, so the modern one, uh, the two five O's, Toast XP, playing a very, very good-looking um, amulet deck. Uh-oh. Who's that that I see? Is that Uro? That is Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, Beater of Face. Um, yeah, I mean, so Azus, this is very stock, right? I would call this stock yeah. other than other than Euro. Um, Azusa's Primeval Titan, Sakura Tribe Scouts, Explorers. There's a Pact of Negation, Summoner's Packs, Once Upon a Time, Amulets, an EE, and then a slew of lands, 30 lands to be precise, a bunch of one ofs. I'm not going to go through all those. But this is uh, public enemy number one for us. This is probably one of the hardest decks for us to beat because of things like Bajuka Bog and because of things like Cavern of Souls and Field of the Dead. And obviously this deck just can kill us so fast before we really have mana to do anything in terms of, and I'm speaking us as the control player. Um, what do you have to say about this thing? This thing's a behemoth. Yeah, this is just not something that I wanted to run into or would ever want to run into. Yeah. Um, it's just, there's just too much going on. It just feels like a lot of our answers just aren't, they don't line up well for sure. No, no. If they're, if they're consistently going to go off on turn four or turn five, you know, at that point, what are we going to do? Because nah. they're not playing instant speed threats and Teferi's not shutting them off. Yep. So like we got to hold up cryptics, but they also have Cavern of Souls. So it's just kind of like, what do we do? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very bad matchup. It was pretty close before the printing of of Field of the Dead, but Field of the Dead just gives it the late game, too. And you want to cut your your Supreme Verdicts in this matchup, because, uh, but because of Field of the Dead, you really... I mean, there's... It's such a hard matchup. It's just, yeah. and I would almost ignore it. Like, that sounds crazy, but you just gain percentage points in your other matchups. I am very much of that mindset. I don't know about you. I know that is kind of a hot, you know, hot take to, to say that, but I don't know, man. It, it's such a bad matchup. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Um. So the next one is also another Titan deck. This is... 
Uh, Namor squats. He went. F- they went five zero as well. Um, so this is a Primeval Titan deck that uses um, good old fashioned scape shift to win the game. This is a deck that is utilizing a new card from uh, Theros Beyond Death, Dryad of Elysian Grove. Um, this is a card that we talked about on the last episode, but I don't know. If this deck is the real deal, I'm going to be eating some crow because I told people that this card would not propel this deck to be the the, the deck, right? Um, yeah. It's just like cards like this are so bad when you mulligan. And like when you top deck them late in the game, they're just atrocious, right? You have to have a non-mulligan hand on turn three to make this card good. And apparently, at least for one tournament, it was excellent because 5-0 is, is, is no joke in one of these tournaments. Um, but this deck, again, is just very good against us. They're playing Field of the Dead. They're playing, obviously, Valakut, and, you know, they're shooting our face on turn is as early as turn four, I think, with, yep. with Dryad. So, yeah, this is gross. This stuff's gross. Because they, they just basically play Dryad... And then they play Primeval Titan, and then they go get uh, Valakut, and they kill you because they go get two Valakuts, and all their things are Valakuts, and uh, it's all the mountains in the world you could ever want. <laughs> you have anything else to say about good old-fashioned Elysian Scape Shift? That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> no, I think you I think you summed it up uh, perfectly. If I'm talking too much, by all means, interrupt me because <laughs> I, I can be a bit of a chatterbox. <laughs> um, oh, no. I'm... So the 4-1 deck, the first 4-1 deck that we come across is another bad matchup for blue-white control. <laughs> um, Bill Sive, or Bill Sieve, 4 one with uh, good old-fashioned Tron. <laughs> oh. oh, but not normal Tron because he's only playing one car and liberated. <laughs> which is mind blowing, but yeah, four great creators. Yes, he is. This this player is not playing any. <laughs> Michael said, "Lattice is banned," and we're still playing four great creators. I mean, liquid metal coating still a card. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> but come on, what are we? Um. I don't have much to say about this. Tron is is a is an okay matchup. It's it's. Decent. This is the core ta- tapper version, so I assume this is a little worse just because they're playing things like Chalice of the Void. Um, that can be really rough for us. Obviously, we have a bunch of impactful one drops and and two drops. Do you have anything to say about good old tr- core tapper Tron? Mm, Tron is Tron, and it'll do Tron things. So, like, <laughs> turn... Turn three corn liberated is always going to suck. Yeah. Um, and then a new spicy one, Soul Strong, coming in with the 4 1 here with uh, this is Yogmoth Thran Physician dot green black dot deck. Um, oh, yeah. No, this deck is sweet, though. I've, I've seen it uh, in paper work. Young Wolf is a house in this deck. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you basically have a young wolf that lasts forever, and it literally never dies. <laughs> um, yeah. Same with Geralt's Messenger. This is actually a new deck that I'm a very big fan of. I not Nothing that I would play, right? But it's a deck that I am happy that it is has carved out its own niche in the meta. Yeah. I think it was uh, Aaron Barrich played it at SCG Knoxville. Um, that's she, the one that won, I right? attended. Yeah, she won uh, SCG Knoxville. That's the one that I was there for. Yeah. Um, so it was there in the Oko um, Urza Oko wow. madness thing. That's... So, like, if it was good enough to win an event there, it's... I think it can still be good enough to win here because Titan was still a fixture of yeah. the format pre-ban. So yeah. it just kind of feels like it's it's good enough. Absolutely. Definitely, definitely agree. Um Moving on to the next four one, we have um, mono red prowess. Like like we talked about earlier, this has got Swift Spears, Niv Magus Elemental, Soul Scar Mage, Grape Shots, um, Ground Rift, 
target creature without flying can't block this turn. Uh, and it has storm, so pretty darn good. Gross. Light up the stage, desperate rituals, gut shot, lava dart, lightning bolt, and manamorphose with a bunch of mountains. Pretty good. Pretty good. This deck's uh, pretty good against control, too. Um, just yeah, because they just, can kind of storm off and just kill you. <laughs> yeah, it's just a uh, it's just a little bit faster than what uh, what Bernie is. Yeah. Um, moving on down the list, we have Karadom. I'm not. I, I'm if I'm butchering that, I apologize. They went four one. Uh, this is devoted druid combo. This deck is really good. It got a huge boost to he- because of Heliod Suncrown. Obviously, it can take advantage of the walking ballista combo here um yeah i mean this is good old-fashioned uh devoted druid combo yeah so i'm a fan i'm a fan i've actually played a bit with this deck it is a really fun usually my combo decks that i play are usually blue based but this one is just so fast that i excuse it for not having blue in it um Moving on, we've got more Primeval Titan decks. Um, we've got an actual Urza deck here at three and two. So this was actually our teammate. Um, yeah, Goldman Zach's. That's that's Zach's tag on Moto. So shout out um, on getting what is this top eight? Yeah, so sweet. But yeah, he uh, he he's he's believing in it still. So yeah. it's he, so, he's proving that you can win without Mox Opal or or Oko with a Urza build, which is actually pretty incredible. Um, uh, one key thing that we want to look at here with uh, Zach's list, um, without uh, Mox Opal in the format, he's having to play Mox Amber. Yeah. So he had he played Sahili Sublime Artificer to allow Mox Amber to tap for red. Makes sense. That's yeah. the big thing is you're having to play uh, another legendary. So like whether it would be Ren and Six if you wanted to play um, that card and have uh, the retrace ability to get your lands back or something like that, you're going to have to play something with red if yeah. you're going to play like the Galvanic Blast and stuff like that because you won't always have it. So having Mox Amber uh, be able to tap for red is very key and so that's why uh, he chose to go for Sahili there. Makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Um, moving on down the line here, it looks like we got some Crab Vine. Nothing new. Also, just a bad matchup for Blue White. Then we've got more Primeval Titan decks along with good old fashioned Jund. I'm a fan of that. Um, and then we're kind of moving into like the lower bracket here. Um, we've got like Bedlam Reveler, old school style of. Mono Red Prowess down at the bottom. Um, we've got... <laughs> this is funny. Uh, I didn't even see this, but this is Eldrazi Tron here at 3 and 2. Um, so uh, much of the same. Obviously, we knew that the Titan decks were going to be good. Um, it's very interesting to me that the Urza decks aren't dead, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, but yeah, have anything else to say? Are there any surprises from this tournament? That you that you want to take away from, or just kind of on the nose, or what? Nah, I just think that we're changing, so we're still going to see a lot of stuff. But you can always count on the primeval decks are going to be there going forward, unless <laughs> something drastically changes there. Um, the mono red decks are still really good. Urza is yeah. going to be a fixture wherever you go, just because that card's busted, and people are going to work with it and work with it and work with it until they find something that works and can. Uh, can move it on up the ladder again. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um. So yeah, let's move on over to the Pioneer Preliminary from January eighteenth. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about this. Not much has really changed in the ways of Pioneer yet. I think this is a format that will be a little bit slower to adapt uh, to to the new cards. Obviously, Modern just got its world rocked. So <laughs> there's going to be a lot of changes in that format. But this format, good old-fashioned, mono black aggro, getting the job done. This is a deck that I actually did a video on my YouTube channel that you should go check out. But, yeah, this deck is just very good. 
uh, looter scooter who, right? Like, they don't even need it. It's crazy. Um, of course, this is playing things like Blood Soak Champion, Gutter Bones, Night of the Even Legend, uh, Murderous Rider, Rankle, these kind of cards. We know this deck. We've seen this deck. I'm very happy. If this is the best deck, quote-unquote best deck, in Pioneer, I am a-okay with that. I'm fine. Yeah, this, this deck is just very good because it plays Thought Seasons and Fatal Push, which are the two best cards. I've been saying this since day one. These are the two best cards in this format. They, they go like, you know, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> they go together. Um, but if this is what Pioneer is, I am perfectly fine with this. Agreed. Um, then moving on down the line, we've got a really sick... Five color Niv Mizzet Reborn deck by uh, Matthew Folks. So he's uh, he's back playing Magic and kind of kicking butt. So yeah, this deck is really interesting. I'm sure you've if if you're in the know a little bit, you've seen this deck. But him winning him five owing this tournament, not winning, but five owing this tournament definitely might put it on the map a little bit more. I think it will take an actual like win at like a GP or or a PTQ that is at a GP for this deck to really be on the map, but Niv Mizzet, we're playing things like Siege Rhino, basically all of the cards that are good in in any color from any guild. <laughs> um, obviously, bring the light to go get your Niv. Um, Deafening Clarion, Supreme Verdicts, Nihiri the Harbinger, Teferi Time Raveler is a four of, Golgari, Vra uh, Golgari Frasca Golgari Queen, if I could speak. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, this deck is really sweet. It's kind of a meme deck, but, man, in the right hands, apparently this deck is just legit. What, yeah. are, your, what are your thoughts on uh, good old good old Niv Reborn? Uh, Niv Mizzet Reborn's a busted card. Being able to, like, look and just refill Cherry your hand pick, is just, yeah. it's just, too, just too much sometimes. Like, if you've managed their resources and your resources – pretty well and then they just drop it and they just refill their hand back up it's just like a just swing of momentum like you just get hit and then like they just run over top of you the rest of the way out oh yeah um things like nahiri like these planeswalkers that just grind out this advantage like if they stick one of those early and you just can't answer it you're dying to that and then if mizzet is just the haymaker that just like knocks Ends you out game. like yeah yeah it's like even if you can remove it all that stuff is still in their hand, and they're just going to get to redeploy all that. And it's just like, oh yeah, what do you do if they've went from no cards in their hand to four or five cards in their hand? Yeah, I mean, in we, one swoop. If you're talking about blue white control, we definitely just can't keep up with it. It's yeah. pretty, um, pretty impossible. Unless like you're the mono black aggro deck, and you're just going just as fast as you can. Like there's just not a lot you can do. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's. Yeah, but for for control, we're we're pretty. I actually saw one of my good buddies play against this in a team tournament, and he just got he won game one, and then just got rocked game two and three. Um, oh, is that a Uro I see in this list? Oh, oh yeah, Lord. it's showing up everywhere, man. <laughs> um, busted card. <laughs> busted card is busted. <laughs> um, the first four one deck in this preliminary is Yama Killer with so he's. A uh, pretty popular uh, streamer and everything. He was playing basically blue white spirits slash blue white skies. So this deck is real good playing brazen borrowers, um, the Inferian Eagle, Mausoleum Wanderers, uh, Rattle Chain, Self of Spirits. Just good old fashioned curious obsession dot get them on a dude dot deck. Um, yep. This deck can be a bit hairy for control for sure um you definitely need to kind of kill all their creatures <laughs> um because once once selfless spirit comes down it's just like oh no which is why i think we've been seeing main deck um settle the wreckage because that gets around selfless spirit yeah um so definitely take take notice and of course both of these deck lists uh, both of these tournaments will be in the show notes below, so make sure to check those out if you are curious of the exact 75 of any of these decks that we're talking about. Um, 
Next up, we have X Whale at 4 1 with another mono black aggro deck. Pretty much just stock, good old fashioned mono black here. Um, then we go on down the line. Nage 051 4 1 with uh, mono black vampires. Never thought I'd be saying in the year 2020 that <laughs> mono black vampires would be, you know, topping big events. So. Yeah, I didn't think we'd we'd be at this point either, but hey, what We're, are you going to do? We out here. <laughs> um, the next one is stream, underscore stream at 4-1 with Chonky Red. That's what it's being called, at least. Um, oh, yes. This is a deck that I actually played on stream a couple nights ago. It felt pretty good. It's, oh, it's it's legitimate. I've it, watched... Uh, dude, Torbron? Are you kidding? That thing just packs a huge punch with... Oh my! You you Torbron into a a uh, chain whirler. You just like laugh at your opponent. Just like yeah, just bolt three everything. mana bolt everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like um, Todd Anderson just claps people with it constantly on stream. I mean he'll do a thing where it's it's wreck the deck, and then like people will just put singleton cards in this deck of like just random just jank red cards, and yeah. it will still get you because. It's just that good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is chonky, and it is good. Um, Chain Whirler, Rabble Master, Glory Bringers showing its its true value in this format as one of the best top-end finishers for red decks. Just being able to blow up a problematic threat, Glory Bringer is as good as it was in Standard. It is that good in Pioneer, I would go as far to say. You want to know what's even better? What's when that? you put an ember cleave on that glory brain. Oh my god. Yeah, there is one ember cleave here too. Jesus Christ, that's terrifying. Uh oh my god. Take ten. <laughs> uh moving on down the line though, we have mono green Eldrazi ramp, and this is a deck that to this day is still very rough for blue white control. Um yep. it's just like you basically in order to beat this deck, you have to stifle the ramp spells. So counter their Nissa's Pilgrimage, um, counter their, shoot, their Boreal Grazers if you get the chance. Like, I, I don't know, man. It's This this matchup is really tough because they yeah. we usually have the longevity. Like what we were talking about earlier with Elspeth, we have the longevity. No, with this, this is exactly the deck that I was alluding to. Ulamog comes down and just ends the game almost on the spot. They don't even necessarily even need to resolve it. Yeah. <laughs> And it's it's been that way even in the uh, the Aetherworks Marvels deck. Yeah. Where, sure, like Teferi can stop the Aetherworks Marvel and they can't cast anything off of it, but they're not doing a whole lot. They're just making land drops pass, and then they'll eventually just yeah. be able to hard cast an Ulamog. And it's like the cast trigger hits, take out like your lands or your planeswalkers, yep. and then even they... if you've countered it, they're just going to do it again. Yeah, and then Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, is really the biggest haymaker where it comes down and just wipes our entire board, um, and the game ends on the spot. <laughs> yep. Um, one thing I would say, Summary Dismissal is actually very, very good, and it's been picking up a lot of traction. If you start to pay attention to the 5-0 lists, um, I will put a link, of course, in the description below to the 5-0 lists for this week from Pioneer. Um, but check those out. Blue white control decks are starting to utilize that. And if your meta is this deck, if you expect a lot of the mono green ramp deck, definitely put some in there. It seems like it's too much, but trust me, when you play against this deck, you will love yourself because you put that card in your sideboard. Um, so yeah, that's mono green ramp. It kind of is what it is. I don't. Do you have anything to add? No, like it's just ramp spells into big threats. Yeah, over and over. Yeah. The next two lists are more of the same. We have uh, blue white spirits, um, and then we have get this four one blue white control. Gernardi. Hopefully, I'm not butchering that. We have a blue white. Let's take a look at this list. Of course, the blue-white decks I love to actually dissect and really talk about a little bit more. Um, so we have Seven Planeswalkers, Jace, Architect of Thought, Narset, Parter of Veils, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, and 
to Fairy Time Ravel. All of those are a two of except for Jace. Jace is a one of. And then in the creature spot, we have some spice. You wanna you wanna tell the the fine folks what the spice is in this creature spot? They got uh three Nyx Fleece Ram. <laughs> I mean, I love this card in the sideboard, but holy smokes, we're playing three of them main. Maybe they yeah, were expecting a, little... a lot of aggro? I don't know. I, that, that's a, kind of a head-scratcher to me. but I mean, they're 4-1, Did... and we saw that the, the we... winner, one of the 5-0s, was a mono-black aggro deck. Yeah, I mean, maybe they like... had some inside edge that we don't. but Yeah, I mean, it can, like, especially in, like, game one where they, they have fatal pushes in. Sure. It's just, like, it just doesn't feel good. Now, if you brought them out of the sideboard... In a, if yeah, if you brought it in and they just side those things out, then it just kind of feels good. But it just right. doesn't feel good with, with that kind of removal. Now, like the red decks, like they don't have enough spells that like hit yeah. four oh, or five against red. I love this. Yes. If if you're if you're meta game, like if you're local meta game, and that's what you're playing is like just F and M's and locals and stuff. By all means, slap as many of these in if your if your meta game is mono red. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, kind of a head-scratcher there. I think also this this player could have played Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis, in this spot and been much more happy with their decision. Um, I agree. Just because... I also think that... Uh, oh, no, go for it. The three Supreme Verdicts should be four. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's just something of note. In Pioneer, play four Supreme Verdicts. It's the best card in the deck. Um, obviously dig through time is an amazing card, but a good majority, I would say 75% of the time, if you have a hand of three lands, Supreme verdict, and who cares what else, if you're, if you have seven cards in your hand, you're snap keeping that. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, one thing that you'll kind of notice, um, especially about standard and pioneer compared to modern there's always going to be more creatures in Pioneer and Standard than there is in Modern, um, just because Modern has access to the better spells, and there yeah. can be a lot more spell-based decks. So if you're playing in a format where creatures are always going to be prevalent, absolutely, four Supreme Verdicts is something you want to do. I don't think there would ever be a reason um, that you wouldn't do it unless there's something printed that like just hoses Supreme Verdict. Outside of that, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Selfless Spirit is obviously insane against us, but it's just kind of its own piece of the metagame at this point. Um, other than that, I mean, this this is a lot of the same stuff we're, we've been seeing. Um, yeah, pretty stock. Red-green, getcha getcha, red-green aggro. We've got uh, the the uh, Lotus Field. Ooh, actually, here's, here's one that's actually pretty spicy. Lotus... So this is Lotus Field with Underworld Breach. Um, this is Source Odin at three two. So did three two. Not not great, but still making making the top here, the top cut, um, or at least to get onto <laughs> Wizards of the Coast website. But I mean, this looks sick. This uh, pour over the pages. Chronic flooding and Channel Land. Whenever and Channel Land becomes tapped, its controller puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. That's pretty hot with Underworld Breach. Yeah, this deck looks hot, dude. Um, oh, that's so cool. I actually do want, I want to play this. I'm going to play this <laughs> maybe next week on Moto on one of my streams. This looks awesome. Um, so, yeah, but other than that, I mean, it is a lot of more mono black down here. There's an Arclight Phoenix deck. Not much. Like I said, I think that it's going to take a little bit longer for Pioneer to react to to the change or to uh to theros uh cards just because it is kind of stabilized finally <laughs> um and we've had so much churn on the the good decks in this format already i think people kind of have their decks and want to play them <laughs> yeah um but yeah i mean that's pretty much all i've got for today's episode do you have anything else that you wanted to touch on or not much um uh... I would just say, uh, if there's one thing that I was going to add, um, it would be remember that Dream Trawler is not as good as Overdrive. <laughs> oh and my if God. you say that, you're, you're absolutely wrong. <laughs> just had to get that in last shot, huh? Yeah. 
Um, awesome, Logan. Well, thank you for hanging out today and talking some magic with me. As always, it's it's a blasty blast. Um, where can people find you on the internet? And if you have any articles or anything, let let the folks know. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at x skies s k y z x. Um, you can find me on Twitch. I uh, I stream every day now. Um, oh yeah. You can find me there at Solitary Pro MTG. Um, I'm actually uh, almost all the way to affiliate after two days. That's awesome, dude. So, uh, that's that's pretty dope. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who's who's helped me get to this point. Um, I want to say that um, you you should definitely uh, check Alex and his content out. We actually done a thing, uh, a joint stream session the yeah, other day the, the in very our first, first ever. Yeah, go for it. Solitary showdown, um, which is a thing that's going to be going on a lot more between teammates, where we're going to be pitted against one another oh, yeah. in the different formats, whether it would be standard, historic. Um, I know we played historic standard. Oh yeah. And then best of one standard. So there would eventually be pioneer, maybe legacy. Oh yeah, I'm down to sure. play some pioneer with somebody too. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, this was a blast, dude. Anytime you want to come on and chat, by all means, just reach out to me. Um, but yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you're listening to this on the podcast apps, make sure to go on over to Apple podcast, give it a five star review and say a couple kind words about the podcast. Cause it really does go a really long way with helping out the algorithm and all that stuff that I don't understand. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the 34th episode. Wow. Mama, we made it. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Shout out to solitary pro the sponsor and of course the patrons over at patreon.com slash less alex and if you did dig this content and you like the streaming and the podcast and the youtube content head on over there and consider becoming a patron um we are very close i think we're two dollars off of the next goal and at that goal i can actually start uh to pay uh high profile folks to come on to the podcast. So I'm really excited to, to reach that goal. And yeah. Um, thank you everyone for your time. And hopefully you got some good learning. I kind of had to bring it back. We had to bring it back. We did a lot of episodes over the last couple weeks that weren't really focused on metagaming and focused on blue white. I, I, I tried some things that I think were really beneficial, but we had to bring it back and talk a lot about the new shakeups from the bannings and you know we we got celestial colonnade unbanned let's go it finally yeah, I happened to play my 15 dollar azorius guild gates <laughs> right <laughs> tap four get blocked that's right <laughs> oh man okay so yeah everyone thank you as always i am less alex thank you have a great night and be kind to one another magic players have a great night <laughs>